Welcome to the shop everyone. On today's video we're going to be grinding that intake out to match the ports on those AFR 265 big block Chevy heads. So just gathering all my tools up, getting my table rolled outside. I can just see better in the sunlight than I can under the lights of the shop. Get my stool out there. And like today's video, it's not going to be, it's just going to be mainly removing the bulk of the material in the intake manifold. And uh, WD-40, I just found it works good if you dip your die grinder uh, carbide bit into that. It keeps the uh, carbide grinder from getting packed up with aluminum. Uh, so, anyways, on this video here, we're basically, I'm just going to be removing the bulk of the material. This is not going to be the finished port. This is just removing the bulk of the material, getting it, you know, pretty close to the scribe lines. Now, when I do the finishing of the port, I'll, I'll bring it to the lines. But, also, I've learned that, you know, when you're doing this, it's, it's so easy just to grind it to the line. And then the next thing you know, you're, you're past the line. So, I'm trying to give me a small margin left for the finish of the port. So, uh, you know, grinding these ports, you know, I found over time that like, you know, when you're grinding the port and just going back and forth, you know, the uh, carbide bit has a dwell time, more of a dwell time on each side. So you get sort of like a little hump or a little lump in the middle. So I try to keep that down. Uh, also, you know, I use my, my hand or fingers, I guess, in the port, kind of like a body man. You know how a body man, you know, feels the side of the body and he can kind of detect lumps and you know, where to smooth it out. So I kind of use my hand to check the port, grind where I feel lumps and humps. Uh, what I, you know, the whole thing of port matching the intake, to me anyways, is just to make the transfer from the intake manifold to the cylinder head as smooth as possible. Almost like it's the same port. You know, it doesn't even know it's, it's left the intake going into the cylinder head. So just making that transition as perfect as I can for the transfer of the fuel and air into the engine. All right, so, you know, grinding away at the port, uh, I like to use my hand as a brace. See how I'm bracing it? So it gives me more control of the carbide grinder as I'm going up through there. All right, so getting a lot of material out of that port. You know, sort of put the grinder at an angle sometimes to help smooth out the, the lumps and stuff that I machine into the port. Now there's my inside draft calipers and I'll set them to about the outside size of the port. Then when I slide it back and forth inside the port where it puts scribe marks, I know that's smaller, smaller than the uh, port itself. So I'll keep doing that and keep grinding that those scribe marks that the uh, calipers leave until, you know, you, you can actually feel it. You know, the spring pressure of the calipers themselves, you can feel it where it gets lighter and lighter to where you know the port shape is about the same size. Alright, so grinding away. Being careful to try to stay within the lines. Alright, so we got about three of the ports on that side of the head. Hogged out, most of the material removed. All right, let's get started on that one. And I always dip, just like every time I take a break, you know, I'll, I'll dip the carbide grinder into that WD-40. Uh, you let it go too long, it'll get packed up in there and then the cutter won't work well. And so I, I, I dip it quite often as I'm grinding in the port. And through the years, I have used like transmission fluid. I've tried to use wax. I've tried to use other things to keep it from getting packed up in there. but. For me, anyways, uh, the WD-40 just seems to work best for me. All right, so let's blow some of them shavings out of that intake. And get started on the other side. So here's kind of a look at it. Starting to bring it into shape. Let's get started on the other side and uh, get that material removed. 
So, you know, another thing you can do is you can make like trenches. You know, you can uh, make trenches back into the pork itself and that kind of gives you like a path on how far to, you know, grind the pork, kind of, you know, those lumps right there. Now, the, the one thing you, I don't like about doing that, if you're not careful where you ground those like lines in there, the grinder will want to keep grinding there. So you have to have, you know, a little bit of control to, to grind that lump down. But, you know, everybody needs to do it, what, you know, however, what's, you know, the way that works best for them to get the result that they're looking for. But I, I tend to do that sometimes too, just to have a pathway and know how much material to remove. All right, so you know when you're grinding a pork, it, it it takes such a long time, and you know I could I could take some of the pictures away and stuff like that, but so I just decided to combine this pork into like four sections, so we're you know like grinding the whole thing at, at once. Don't know exactly how to make <laughs> this video interesting, where somebody could watch it all the way to the end, uh, satisfy the algorithm of YouTube. All right, so it looks like I got those two ports shaping up. Looks like a lot of that material's out of that port. Starting to look nice. And I'm just using my fingers there to feel out, you know, any bumps or humps. I use my uh, drafting calipers to put those scribe marks. You can kind of see those scribe marks inside that port. And then I'll just keep grinding those until, you know, you, you can feel it not dragging as much when you get the port out to that side. All right, so got these last two ports to go. Put my scribe marks in there, and then I just grind on that wall until those marks are gone. And I might do that two or three times before, you know, it gets to where the port is the same size going back into it. Now like on cast iron, sometimes I'd have to put bluing in there just so like it would scrape the bluing because it doesn't show up as, you know, as easy as aluminum. Aluminum, to me anyways, is just, uh, I enjoy porting aluminum a lot more than cast iron. Now I'm going to do the floor and sort of blend the floor in, uh, give it a nice easy curve going in. Now, you know, the dual plane intake is basically two different intakes, you know, the way they have the, you know, the lower part and the upper part. So they're not ever going to flow the exact same. But anyway, so here's what the majority of the material removed from the intake. On the next video, we'll be using the sand rolls and perfecting the intake pores, even making them more smooth than contour. So there's our pile of extra aluminum left over. So we made the intake not only flow better, but also we made it lighter. So that's going to help out on our, our performance build. And as always, we hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys liked the video, please give us that like. Uh, subscribe if you'd like to. Ring the bell. Share. Do all those things. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and we hope to see you all on the next video. Thanks so much.